Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I have an interest in death charts. I've been following the subject and lecturing about it for the past several years and I wanted to share with you since I've been following the Epstein story and today it's been announced that Jeffrey Epstein has took his own life in prison. So let's look at the charts together. It's me, you and Georgia. So this is Jeffrey Epstein's natal chart. Um, it's a sun on first chart since we don't know the exact birth time. Jeffrey was born in New York, New York on January 20th, 1953. So this chart is set for 12 p.m. and the sun is set to be on the cusp of the ascendant. And so all the houses are derived by the sun that day in its height. So even the house placement has a significance because it's solar. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk a little bit about this chart and just want you to notice the south node in Leo in the seventh conjunct Pluto. Being an evolutionary astrologer, this already tells me that this is a soul that comes with intense memories regarding relationships and love and passion. And since the, the, the North Node is in Aquarius, this is about knowing to involve the higher mind and stepping out a bit from the heart into the mind and maybe involving oneself in something that is not only for my own betterment, but for the betterment of mankind, making this a better world for everybody, more advanced world for everybody. We can see this conjunction between Venus and Mars in Pisces, giving um, a feeling of something that is a bit limitless. See here, it is in the second house of this solar chart, uh, involving passions and sensuality. We can see that sensuality and maybe over sensuality and over indulgence is something that this soul already remembers and would echo again in this lifetime. As you can see, we have a tight T-square between Jupiter in the fourth and Taurus, again, talking about indulgence in the sexes and the senses, and a tight T-square with these nodes. So this is definitely a life lesson and a very important place to watch out for karma in this life because Jupiter in Taurus is, is it's about having more than I need with everything in regard to the physical plane so that's money and land and assets and anything sensual as well like food and drink and sex and enjoying the comfortability of the interaction between me and this physical plane and being over attached to it and having it come too easy can cause karma in the next life so let me let you on an understanding that i'm teaching these days the most sensitive place for karma for creating karma in this life is where jupiter is placed because that's the place where we get it easy that we were lucky this time around and that we could because of that not have enough respect towards that area and towards our achievements and gifts in that area as we should and create circumstances that are not positive and so induce karma in the next life um we can see also the square between Saturn and the Sun. Saturn in the sign of relationships. Libra, conjunct Neptune, again talking about borders or the lack of borders. Again, having a feeling of limitless behavior within relationships. Thinking that he could escape Neptune, the law Saturn and relationships. I want to say 
something else about Mercury being placed in the, the Saturnian sign in Capricorn, in the sign of karma, in the 12th, as echoing this conjunction that it's squaring. And we can see Chiron standing in there being the second most karmatic planet around after Saturn. So this is definitely that uh, karma that comes along with this person from another life. It's not the first time that these transgressions have occurred, whether by him or towards him. Because for me, Mercury talks about young people as well. And since this is in the 12th, again, limitless behavior, maybe towards young people, squaring this conjunction right here, hurting young people because I don't have enough limits and creating karma could be a, a translation of this astrological sign. And we can see that he's aided in doing it by a Jupiterian trine. I see trines as Jupiterian signatures. So he's being aided by this Jupiter in Taurus in the fourth, coming with so much power, so much wealth from his family, the fourth house. We could see that the family is a, is a set, has a sense of nobility. He was born, whether it's from his family or by his family or his parents made him feel that, or he was born just feeling it, a regent. He always thought he was special and above everybody else, that he was the king of this Leo. And he needed to tame his regent within him into a commoner to understand that everybody's equal with this North Node in Aquarius. But <clears throat> that's not something that happened, I guess. We can, we can see something about his emotional uh, a need for satisfaction as well and uh, getting his way and the difficulty to push away the need for immediate satisfaction again in the third house of young people we have the sign of the female the moon with Aries conjuncted in the sign of Aries so Aries in Aries like we all do, it's a generational planet, more than a generational planet. We all, like basically all people alive have, uh, if, if we're not very, very old, <laughs> I think we have this uh, signature, but it's conjunct his moon. So in a way, he could feel that maybe his mother, you know, was a very strong person and a uh, uh, independent person with an independent mind, but he could really need his gratification immediately when it comes to his immediate environment or young people. So let's take this chart. I mean, I don't, I don't want to take too much time around it. But let's take this chart and place it with the death chart. We have an exact death chart. We know he was fine at 6.30 a.m. Uh, in his cell in New York, New York. So let's go back one week. We know that he tried taking his life a week ago already, right? I'm sorry, a minute. So he tried taking his life a week ago just as Mars was over his at Pluto, taking my own life, life, Leo, taking Mars, and death, Pluto. And that Sun-Venus conjunction, superior conjunction, was over his south node, dealing with unfinished karma visiting that place women getting their day in the sun 
women with the sun, Venus with the sun, Venus with the king, coming on his past. Just across from his own natal sun. 180 degrees. That's for me a Saturnian aspect. Any opposition. So karma coming to visit. And look at this, folks. This Neptune right here has been dissolving his power. Mars. For a long time. And Venus. So all that place of limitless passion has been under the demolition of Neptune for a pretty long time. While Chiron was heading towards that moon. It's retrograding now, but it would be just over this moon soon enough if he would stay alive and he was feeling it. And the most exact thing in this chart, folks, the most impactful thing in this chart. Let me make this clear for you. Because this is just, you know, point on. Is this Mercury here in the 21th degree and Pluto here in the 21st degree as well? How exact could we be 20 minutes degrees apart, you know, in the same degree, 20 minutes apart in the same degree Ah, oh, wow. So what I've been doing, what I've been saying, the ideas I've been spreading around, you know, my actions, my interactions have been catching up with me. You know, everything's breaking apart and appearing. Everybody knows how I've treated these women and Saturn. The Lord of Karma goes over the Skyron, the Wounded Healer. Again, Karma and Karma. And they're only four minutes apart, folks. Four minutes apart. How exact is that? And not only that, they're squaring all of that natal aspect. So Saturn, Pluto... Karma is a bitch. Comes over this very sensitive spot called the Goklen Point. Over the Ascendant. The most impactful statistically, scientifically point in your birth chart. As these two very transformational planets sit over these two rising planets in the solar chart. This man takes his own life. And he tried to do that <clears throat> as the sun was, was trining this moon, you know. Let's do something about it. Let's get lucky and escape all of this. But he wasn't successful. And today, one week later, <sighs> as... Jupiter trines his moon and this signature is as exact as it could be as the sun is heading with Mars over his Pluto he succeeded but let's let's take a look at his death charts alone death chart alone and see the story he tells because we know there's no escape, you know. Let's see where the soul is going in the next life. So where is it coming from, you know? It's coming. Let's make this clear for you. Let's look at the south node. Let's say this is a birth chart, okay? A woman or a man born with this chart comes from a life of great turbulence and karma with either sex or love or passion in the fifth house love passion pluto sex karma saturn and capricorn and 
interestingly enough, he was born this time around with Leo on the south node. And here he's born, or going to the next life, in the fifth house. He was born this time around with Aquarius on his north node, and he's leaving this earth with the north node in the eleventh house. And we can see this very strong Jupiter in the fourth house conjunct the moon, so he would probably be born into a big family. A lot of women in that family. You can see Ceres adding to that. <clears throat> and he came, you know, he would go into a life in which he would need to learn A to B again above his waist and more into his higher mind and maybe pick up something that would be good for his brothers and sisters, his fellow men, and not just for himself. So we can see that theme continuing onwards with that soul. So you're not exempt. If you haven't learned this this time around, you will learn this in the next life. But let's look at other signatures in this chart. First thing I see is this Juno Mars conjunction in Leo with the Sun and Venus all rising in these Goklen points. So probably a very beautiful, I would say either man or woman with a tendency to meet violent partners. Partners, Juno or Hera in charge of long-term relationships and the Sun. So if he was born a female, he could have trouble with cocky, arrogant, strong, violent men this time around that would be attracted to her because she's so beautiful. <laughs> and if she's a she this time and next time, she could be so sensitive with this Neptune in Pisces in the seventh and not really look for ordinary relationships with Aquarius on the seventh house. And maybe not have enough borders when it comes to intimacy with this Neptune on the cusp of the eighth. And then feel this Chiron in the eighth in Aries. And maybe get hurt sexually or have a soft spot, a wound, a pain regarding sex and intimacy and experience things. This adds up to violent relationships in my life that could have a karmatic essence to them, violent essence to them. <clears throat> and in this way, the soul can learn how important it is to be just and fair and good-hearted and sensitive towards your partner by experiencing violence, turbulence, and pain because it is too sensitive from her partners or from his partner. Interesting. So <clears throat> just a tip of the iceberg. We could always go deeper, but we can see how things keep on evolving and going on. I want to thank you for watching this. And if you enjoyed this, just share it. And of course, you could reach me on Instagram and Facebook and through my email at buzzfighter at gmail.com or check me out at buzzfighter.com you could always study with me or come from per for a personal consultation so have a beautiful week live long and prosper bye-bye